Joining me now, uh, independent MHA for Mount Pearl Southlands, Pauline on line three. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Pete. How about yourself? Pretty good. Read with interest the information that you uh, sent along there just the other night. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I see the criteria. I know that, uh, for instance, you can get nine centimeters uh, without, uh, particularly if it's not that windy, uh, without triggering any uh, call-ins whatsoever to put a single machine or whatnot on a, on a uh, fairly busy route. Uh, yeah. and, and that, in your estimation and to your knowledge, is completely different than what happened, say, even a year ago. Well, Pete, my understanding, uh, you know, uh, of it is that um, certainly last year um, for the busy routes, um, which is four percent, and and you notice uh, if you look, if you listen to some of the information being put out by government, they got a bunch of memes out on Facebook now, when they're talking about you know it's only four percent, ninety six percent of the roads, nothing has changed, and so on, and they try, you know, obviously you do that and try to diminish the issue. Uh, but the reality of it is that the 4% of the roads we're talking about are areas which were identified as high traffic areas. And that would be areas of the Trans Canada Highway, the Outer Ring Road, Pitts Memorial, Veterans Memorial, and so on. Yeah, those three and depots you were talking about, the Foxtrap, Whitburn, and what was the other one? The three that, there's a bunch of depots. Uh, I, I obtained, Yeah, I, I obtained information on a bunch of depots. Well, actually, all the depots on the... Uh, on the Avalon Peninsula, yeah. and I can only speak to those. I don't know, uh, you know, if it's similar in other ones or not uh, across the province. But anyway, for those areas, uh, there was three depots in particular, which was uh, the Fox Trap Depot, the Donovan's Depot, um, and the Whitburn Depot. Mm-hmm. And in those, in the case of those depots, um, for the four days that I was given the reports on. Um, which was, I think, December 29th, 30th, and I think it was January 2nd and 3rd, if I'm not mistaken, were the four dates. Yeah, I read out uh, a lot of that information yeah, yeah, uh, like, yesterday. Like, yeah, yeah for, I mean, for those days, uh, we have a major issue with equipment availability. So when you hear the government saying, you know, all available equipment is on the road, that uh, I have no doubts that it, that it is. Yeah. But the problem is, is that we don't have enough available equipment. No, but, twenty-two to fifty-five percent, essentially, depending on the uh, depot, right? And it was correct. Friday. I read it out. Sorry, not yesterday. Correct, obviously. correct. And that's in the highest, like I said. And those are, and those particular depots are covering areas. Like as I said, those are covering areas as uh, from Whitburn to St. John's in, uh, on the uh, Trans Canada Highway and Pitts Memorial Drive and Vit and um, and um, the Outer Ring Road and uh, Robert E. Howler Highway and so on. So very high traffic areas where people are coming in mm-hmm. to work, people are coming in to go to the hospital and for other services and, and, and so on. Right. But, the, but the issue that uh, I guess that, that um, uh, I guess we had, um, I provided you some information with uh, last night, has to do with the, the schedule and the 24-7 schedule. So, you know, in the past for these high traffic areas, uh, there would have been a reduced crew on in the nighttime. So overnight, instead of there, for argument's sake, if there was a route, say Donovan's that might have had, I don't know, uh, I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but let's say they had five trucks. In the nighttime, they probably had one or two trucks. So it wasn't the full crew, but there was a reduced crew in the nighttime. So they would be working. And the issue, of course, what the government were saying is that why have these guys on working on a perfectly clear night, no snow falling, no freezing rain, and so on, and they're all over in the depot having a game of cards or whatever. I guess that's the perception. Mm. So why pay them? Uh, Why not just call them in as we need them? And we'll do that based on the weather forecast. Right. So what they've said is that nothing has changed, is that if we have bad weather, then these crews wouldn't be on. Now, what I have found out from information again provided to me, and this was a an email, uh, so I'm not making this up. This is an email from the superintendent of operations to yeah. supervisors, mm-hmm. and what they've talked about is these trigger points. Right. And one of the trigger points is it says you call people in or hold them back if there is a forecast of greater than 10 centimeters. So, therefore, if we have uh, the forecast and they're saying we're going to get 5 to 10 centimeters tonight, that's not greater than 10. Right. So that means they're not calling them in. Now, we might get 5, 
we might get 10, or knowing the way our weather is, we could end up with 15 or 20. But once but we have 10, they don't get called in. But once we have 10, then it's up to the discretion of the supervisor to make that call, right? To say, okay, it w wasn't forecast to be more than 10. It clearly is more than 10. So now I'm going to yep. call them in and hopefully get someone. And within an hour between them getting here and getting the equipment ready, they'll be out on the road. Now, here's Correct. the main, here's the main thing in all this to me. Mm -hmm. The criteria, the thresholds yep. are new, right? Yes. Well, that's my. Well, yes. I mean, according to the email there, I mean, this was. I mean, there was no. Like there would have been no threshold. No, no. But what I'm wondering is, if before, if they had the bodies there in the building, are they still not sending them out until there's ten centimeters of snow expected? Well, that's a good question, and that's something I guess that you would have to. I mean, that it doesn't. That issue was not addressed in that email. My understanding in talking to some people is that, look, if the buys were in anyway, working, and if you got five centimeters of snow or you got 10 or whatever you got, they're on, they're working, they're getting paid, so they'd be out on the road clearing whatever was there. That's my understanding. Now, I can't say, I mean, that's not stated in that email how that used to work, but... My understanding is that they're there, they're getting paid, so at the start of the snow, they'd be out on the road clearing that snow. Yeah. Now what we're saying is that we don't call them in unless the forecast is calling for more than 10 centimeters of snow. Mm -hmm. So, of course, what would happen then, let's say if we end up with 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 10, for that matter, mm -hmm. and we're not calling somebody in, well, then that means all that night that snow doesn't get cleared. It means in, uh, like, you just take the outer ring road as an example. There's cars going back and forth. They're all night. They're going to the airport. They're going there to the health science, wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. Now you have cars going over that and trucks going over that, yeah. that are compacting that snow with their tires running over it. Then it turns to ice. Yeah. And then we see these situations with these washboard roads and icy roads. Right. If we get mild weather mm -hmm. and the snow starts to melt, that's when you hear people talking about how they were driving on the roads and was all slush yeah. and slippery and slushy. And that's we're talking about four... I guess wasn't cleared and turned slush. For people who don't do the conversion, there's about four inches of snow. There's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So we're talking about yep. four inches of snow. And what happens if you get a forecast, and it's accurate, say it's accurate, it's eight centimeters of snow. It's below yep. the 10 centimeter threshold. Say it's yep. uh, uh, forecast accurately to be 40 kilometers an hour wind so mm -hmm. that uh, less than four inches of snow is not going to be evenly distributed four inches everywhere obviously Correct. with that kind of wind you're going to get some areas that have drifts up to two feet high and other parts that are bare well, that's that, that's correct, Pete. And these are the these are, I guess, a lot of the concerns I suppose that I and others would have. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, the bottom line is this, and here's how I look at it. Look, why not come? Uh, why not come clean on all this? Why wouldn't government just simply say, "Look, uh, we're in a financial mess. We need to find ways to save money. We believe this is a way we can save some money. Mm -hmm. This is what the criteria are. This is what our trigger points are. This is what we're doing and how we're doing it." There will be times that it will work out. There will be times where maybe the roads won't be so great. But unfortunately, that's where we're to, and that's what we can afford. And be upfront about it. But yeah. when you come out and you say nothing has changed, uh, or when you or when you talk about equipment availability, you say, well, all available equipment is on the road. Mm. Why not come out and say, look, um, you know, um, we don't have all the equipment available because we have breakdowns. Uh, we don't have enough staff. Uh, we're trying to recruit, or we can't afford to recruit more. We're doing the best we can, and the roads won't be as great as they were. Why not be? Why not come out and like be upfront about it? Well, I'll tell you why. Because although it. it might be more accurate and more truthful, uh, essentially it doesn't play well politically. People aren't going to be satisfied with that, and they're going to say, guaranteed, the majority of people are going to say, you don't. You don't compromise on safety just like you don't compromise on health care when it's uh, mm -hmm. potentially a life and death situation. So there's no winning in that department. Uh, well, they, it, you know, whether or not they should be making cuts here is one thing, but certainly they're not going to get a fair ride if they think that it's a legitimate place to cut. Well, the bottom line is, is that if, if uh, the reaction is going to be that it's a safety issue and it shouldn't be caught, well, then it shouldn't be caught. Simple as that. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to make a decision, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a legitimate decision, or we have no choice, come out and say you're doing what you're doing. And if you can't justify that decision, it probably wasn't a good decision, a good decision to begin with. I guess that that would be 
my thoughts on you know my thoughts on it. But the bottom line is, when we're hearing from people about roads, and it's not not me just saying it. There's all kinds of people see it, saying it. They're calling into your shows. They're on social media. There's they've been in the media now with uh, ambulance operators are complaining about it. Uh, and 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 so on about safety issues, emergency responders. Mm-hmm. So it, I mean, I'm not making this up. You're not making it up. No. It is a real issue. Yeah. And uh, the evidence is there. And the bottom line is, is that you know, uh, again, according to this information, which again, I'm not making up this information. It's coming straight from the department. Mm. These are the changes that have been made. Yeah. And there's no doubt it's having an impact. Now, whether or not that impact is acceptable. To the population, given our fiscal circumstance, I guess that's up to the people to decide. I'll but tell you what it is, Paul. It. It's right up Pardon? there. It's right up there. We're saying a crisis is not a crisis when most people think it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. There's no doubt. There's yeah. no doubt. So you know, uh, bottom line is, um, I'm just trying to put out the facts so that people understand what the facts are without any spin. Like I said, and and that's what's there direct from the department. And like I said, if the if the if the minister and the and and the government are you know satisfied with what they're doing and they feel they have no choice, then come out and say it and own the decision and be accountable for it. But don't go saying that nothing has changed when clearly something has changed. Don't go saying, don't go putting a spin on it that all you know that, that everything is hunky dory and equipment is on the road and say all available equipment is on the road when you know that there are a number of areas where. Uh, a lot of the equipment, yeah, all that's available might be on the road, but we have an awful lot broken down that should be on the road that's not on the road. And whether, that's the, whether that was the same last year and under the former administration, I couldn't tell you. And whether it's uh, consistent across the province, I can't tell you. I can only tell you the facts that I've uncovered and put out there. Okay. Well, you know what most people are thinking when they hear a politician say, no, without spin. They're thinking, yep. why, why start now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? I guess, like anything, we got to start somewhere, right? All right. All right. Thanks again for this. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, Pete. You have a great afternoon. Always great talking to you. Take care. All right. Bye now. Pauline.